Hey everyone, my name is Birgitta and I'm a talent business partner with Fulton Hogan. So I'm working on the recruitment side of things. Um, and Marie is in my team as well. So she's with us. Um, and we also have Cedric, who's one of our graduate civil engineers. Um, so he can answer all your tricky questions around what he actually does um, and stuff like that. Um, so we've got a quick presentation we're going to run through and then we're going to focus more on the Q&A um, side because I can see you guys have had quite a lot of questions throughout that panel. Um, so yeah, let's run through it. Um, if you do have questions, drop them in chat and we will run through them um, as we go. Um, so just briefly, um, I know Donovan covered Fulton Hogan as a whole. So Fulton Hogan, um, we have the corporate office, our head office is actually in Christchurch, um, but we have offices all over the country and we're split into two sides. So Donovan sits within the civil side of the business. Um, so construction is made up of major projects and civil, and we build all the big exciting projects. Um, on the other side, we have infrastructure services um, and they, do a lot of um, maintenance work um, and they also that covers the quarries, asphalts and sand plants. Um, and as Donovan mentioned as well, we're a vertically integrated business. So we um, use our own resources and labor to deliver projects, which is quite cool. So as B just said before, um, we are split into two parts. I'm the, um, the national talent manager for the construction division. And that's all the big sexy stuff. That's how I like to phrase it. So um, it's major projects and civil. And there's just a couple of examples here of um, some of our projects. Um, we've got Queenstown's busy at the moment. Um, they are running full throttle. We have um, a lot, we're doing a lot of work in the water space, um, mainly in the North Island. Um, and um, you'll see that we've got Waiari there. Um, and the team is doing really well on that on that project too. Um, we're, we're hitting our milestones. Um, we also um, have a, a project called the Watercare Enterprise Model um, that we're delivering with, with Watercare. That's in the Auckland region. Um, our civil team is also delivering the Fonterra um, Community Model. So there's a lot of work in the dairy space that we're doing. Um, Manawatu Gorge is another big grunty project that we're very excited about we've got three major bridges on that that um, everyone's very excited about um, there's a couple of projects that aren't mentioned on there of course but we just sort of chose a couple of images that we thought would get everybody excited um, so that's um that's the major project side and then if we go to the next slide infrastructure services again we're just splitting that up for you so that you understand how it all works our infrastructure services, as you saw on the on the first slide, it, it, it's it's kind of like um, it handles the manufacturing side. So it's the bitumen, it's the asphalting, it's all the black stuff that goes on top of the road. Um, and um, we've also got Stevenson's that's part of that business, and they deliver all of it. They also deliver all of our knock contracts, so all of the big maintenance projects that come up. Um, and there's just a couple of examples there on on the screen of some of our. our projects on the infrastructure services side. Cool, thanks Marie. Um, so moving into our grad program itself, um, we'll give you a brief overview of that. So our grad program runs across two years. Um, you rotate generally every six months to a different part of the business or a different part of the project, depending on where you go. Um, we also have four graduate summits a year. So all our grads come together um, and hear from some of our senior leaders and do some learning stuff and just get to network, which is really important. Um, you also get joined up with a buddy when you first start. So they're there to help you out and answer any questions and just um, make sure you are feeling okay um, and know what you're doing. And you also get a mentor and a career development plan. Um, we help you work towards your chartership as well. Um, and we have stuff like lunch and learn sessions and um, really it's up to you how much you wanna learn because there's just heaps of stuff you can get involved with. Um, if you join the construction division, you'll either be in our civil team um, and work on a range of different structures and heavy civil projects. Um, and you can rotate into a major project or you could join a major project and either stay on that project the whole time, but experience different parts of it. So as it progresses, 
um, through the different um, areas. So like when a project first starts, it's kind of earthworks focused and then it moves into structures and onwards from there. So you get quite a lot of exposure across the project. Um, or you can move into civil and maybe work on a smaller project and have potentially more responsibility. Um, so there's a lot of different options and it's up to you where you want to go really. Um, you can put your hand up and drive your career that way. Um, and I guess the main focus um, that we want you to think about is that we want you to have a good career with us. Um, you start as a grad and you can go as far as you want. You can switch areas, you can progress into a senior leadership role. Um, it's really endless where you can get to. The career pathways um, is a key way that will help you do that. Um, and we're pretty proud of this, it's pretty recent, but it shows you your um, pathway from coming in as a grad engineer and then progressing to a site engineer. Um, I know the writing's probably a little bit small for you guys, but um, you can see the list of different training um, and experiences that you need to get to the next step. And it's just a clear way for you to plan your year and um, work out what experiences you need to get. And that kind of drives what projects you might want to go on to as well. Like if you've had no exposure to something and you can see you might need it to move on to the next level, you can put your hand up and move that way. Um, and there's other ones as well that show you how to change into a different area um, of the business. If you have more of an interest in maybe like health and safety or um, mechanical and electrical or something like that, that comes out, you can switch over as well. So you're not just confined to the engineering pathway. Um, and then in terms of our recruitment process, I know I'm going through this really quickly, but I wanna leave lots of time for your guys' questions um, and for Cedric to tell you a bit about what he actually does as a grad as well. Um, so I'll just quickly run through the application process and then Cedric can have a chat with you. Um, so our applications are open now until the 26th of April. So you've got a week or so, but just get them in as soon as possible. We don't wait for the shut off date. We contact people as they come in. Um, so, you know, we're already progressing through interviews and stuff like that. So get in as soon as you can. Um, our start dates are towards the end of this year and early next year. But if you've already finished or you're finishing halfway through the year or whatever, we can accommodate that as well. So don't let that put you off. Um, it's a really quick application process. We just need your CV. Um, and then Marie or I tend to give you a call um, and have a chat with you just around what you're looking for and what you're interested in. Um, and from there, it's an interview um, just online at the moment with the whole COVID situation. And then we do reference checks. So it's a pretty fast um, process and we just want to make it as easy as possible for you. Now I'm going to pass you over to Cedric um, and he can tell you a bit about what he does as a grad. Uh, maybe Cedric, do you want to start off with how you got into um, Fulton Hogan and why you applied and just your journey so far? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so I studied at the University of Auckland um, and joined FH uh, at the end of 2020. Um, I got a call from Marie um, one day um, and I didn't actually notice that it was an interview um, per se. Um, so it was more of a chat um, and she just wanted to know who I was and really get to know me on a casual level. Um, after that, I was invited into an interview um, kind of scenario bit different from I guess how we do it nowadays um, but even in that session I was I was well comfortable um, Marie made sure I was comfortable and not took away all my jitters and all that um, but I quite liked that uh, interview um, just because they didn't pound on making sure you were the perfect person um, for the job but more of if they could find you were the right fit for where you could go um in your future um and that's that's what stood out to me with fh um so yeah i joined fh down in new plymouth um which was a big move um but i was i just wanted to get my foot in the door mostly um and i really enjoy that experience because 
working in such a small region, I was in an office with just me and the project manager sitting behind me. And I was just always able to ask them questions. Uh, um, so that, that first project was a pump station. Um, it was a lot of concrete work and steel reinforcing um, extension of that, the existing pump station. So a lot, a lot of, um, I'd say it's thrown in the deep end, but still have someone who has your back um, with the project manager. Um, after that, I moved up to Awakino um, after a few months um, to do the Awakino tunnel bypass. So I got to touch on pavement works and bigger civil works. Um, that, that was even more interesting because I got to meet more of the FH team all over New Zealand. Uh, and then after that, I moved up to Auckland and now I'm up at Hibiscus Coast doing another pump station. So more of the uh, major underground pipe work and cut-ins, which I think Donovan mentioned earlier, um, part of the um, Watercare Enterprise model. So yeah, big scope of work's coming up. Cool. Um, it's definitely interesting being able to go through all those different projects. Um, <laughs> does anyone have any questions for Cedric about what it's like um, to be a graduate in Fulton Hogan? Chuck those in the chat. Maybe in the meantime, I'll answer a few of these other questions. Um, how many grads are you taking across Fulton Hogan? We're looking for 85 um, or so grads. So that's across the whole business. Um, so there's lots of opportunities for people to get a grad role there. Tips to prepare for an interview. Um, do a bit of research on the company. Um, you know, we're a contracting company, we're not a consultancy, <laughs> like, it's just, you know, it's just good to have that sort of basic thing um, under your belt. But really, we want you to do your best in an interview, we want you to show us who you are and get to know you. Um, and we do help you do that in the interview. Um, you can also always practice like situational based questions as well. Um, and there's heaps of those online. It's always good um, to have a look at those. Um, oh, look, Cedric has one for you. Anything you wish you did differently in your first year? Oh, first year. Hmm. I don't, I don't think I would have done many things differently. Um, I, I really appreciate that I was able to travel around the country um, to, to take part of these, in these other projects, especially meeting the people down in um, New Plymouth, um, seeing how they function and compared to the big city in Auckland. So I, yeah, I, do, I don't think there was much that I would change. So Cedric, if I can just jump in there, can you maybe talk about, because we talk about having um, having a career and it's important to be flexible and be able to move around and, you know, you'll get to a point, all of you, I can't see any of you, so it's a bit difficult, but um, you'll get to a point where you're comparing each other against your cohort and you're wondering why some people might be getting ahead of others um and sometimes that's a bit of a that's a bit of a mystery but what we find is that people within our, our um, business that are prepared to move around a little bit and um it's like you're gathering snapshots and you need to think about what you're going to be like when you're a grandma or a granddad and that's hard to imagine now but it will happen one day believe me time flies so you know you've got them on your knee and you're going through your brag book and you're going through all those little photos and saying look I built this bridge um this was a wastewater um, treatment plant that I worked on um, and and you're, you're basically you're, you're gathering the structures or you're gathering the experiences that you need in order to have a really well-rounded career with us and Cedric you were the one that was you were happy to put your hand up and you were you were happy to go where the work was and you got to go to Taranaki and you got exposed to quite a few different projects and you got exposed to more because you were in a smaller region, didn't you? And yep. then um, Donovan, who's now gone, but Donovan was on before. Um, Donovan said to Cedric, what can I do to make your job better? And Cedric said, oh, look, I'm really keen to get back to Auckland. And within two weeks, he was back up in Auckland. So can you talk a bit about what it was like for you going down to Taranaki and how it gave you a bit more exposure to a few things and perhaps rounded you out quite quickly um, in that first, that first year? Yeah, for sure. Um, so coming into 
the team in New Plymouth. Um, I think the team was about seven, seven of us in the management team. Um, and the area manager sort of brought me around to all of the projects in the first week. Um, so I got to meet the whole team. Um, don't know if you guys have been to New Plymouth, but it's, it's a really nice place. Um, definitely different from Auckland. Um, but the main, the main things that I learned really is that, you know, you have to be willing to, to make the effort to actually ask the question, um, as dumb as it seems, um, they don't know what you don't know. Um, and I think that's, that's, that's a big, big thing. Um, and then another one is being in a place where I didn't have any other grads to really talk to. Um, the graduate summit was able to connect me with other grads, um, and see how they're doing in their own projects. And basically we, we, we catch up and, um, make a good rapport to see how, how we're doing all over, all over New Zealand, really. There's another one here, Cedric. What's your biggest challenge going from uni to full-time work? Oh, uh, well, it's, it's a bit different for me because during the summer breaks, I did um, internships with a construction company. Um, so I was used to the early mornings and late finishes, um, but I'd say something that's more relatable is um i guess coming into this business you don't actually know much um coming from uni um you know all the theory and all that um but the main thing that you you, you learn most most of the skills from the guys actually down doing the job um from the chippies and the foremans and, and and the supervisors um and i guess making a good relationship really helped me to understand the practicalities of actually getting things done um, which makes you a better engineer at the end of the day yeah. cool um any other questions coming up we've only got one minute left um before we hand it over um in terms of video interviews we're not doing those on our side of the business at the moment but in general make sure you've got a good microphone and your camera's working properly and just be yourself don't overthink it um just you know short answers that um get to the point rather than rambling on a bit it's definitely good to write some stuff down for those i would say um in terms of certain positions in certain locations um I mean, you're going to have more options if you can be flexible, but we do appreciate that people have commitments um, and so need to stay in a certain location, and that's fine too. Um, some things can be done flexibly. I wouldn't say we offer any remote grad roles just because you need to be learning um, with people that have the experience, and it's really hard to do that remotely at the start, um, but we do work um, flexibly, so there's definitely options there. Um, and I think that pretty much brings us to a close for our presentation. Um, I will drop a link to the application in the chat. Um, it is still open until the 26th. So don't worry about that. You haven't missed out. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for your time. Um, you can reach out to Marie or I on LinkedIn. Not sure if Cedric's there, but... Um, <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, any questions, let us know. And I'll hand back to you, Sam. Fantastic. Thank you, Bukita. Thanks, Marie. Thanks, Cedric, for your time today and also to Fulton Hogan more broadly for being joined on the panel as well. Um, very insightful and hopefully all of our students got a lot out of it.